Good morning everybody and welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today we've got some shoeing issues and feet issues with that we're going to be dealing with. Um, I actually asked my Amish farrier to if he could come down here and do a job for me instead of me taking the horse up up to his place and he was willing to do that. Um, I want The reason I wanted to do it here is because I wanted to film it and show um, the situation we're dealing with and maybe you could learn some things and I hope to learn some things also. So what we have is Baron. Baron is a, okay, is our four-year-old Suffolk. He is still a stallion and he's got a few leg issues um, that we need to deal with. Um, I think I'm going to take him outside so I can explain a few things to you before Eli gets here. Okay, so this will be Baron's third reset on these shoes. Um, I put the first shoes on and when I did, his front feet were fine. But when I went to do his hind feet, and today, is, to be honest truth, I can't remember if I actually put the shoes on the hind feet or if I just trimmed them. But anyways, and I don't think I showed it. But on his hind feet, both of his, let me think now, both of his inside heels, the corners of his inside heels were, I bet, three quarters of an inch higher than the outside heels. So what he was doing, it was he was walking kind of on an angle like this. So he's walking kind of like this. If you can see me like this, see both sides are, are tipped in. So. The reason for that probably is because he didn't get the proper trimming when he was younger and so it just tended to grow that way for some reason. So I cut those heels down so they were level. So he had a flat foot to land on when he landed. Mm -hmm. um, because of those issues I wanted Eli to continue doing the shoeing so I asked him if he would continue shoeing Baron. So I took him up to his place one time and he re, I can't remember if he put shoes on or, re, or took the shoes off that I might've put on and it doesn't matter. Um, he, he, he thought things would be fine. But if you can imagine, if you're walking with your feet tipped like this, the amount of uh, um, strain it does on the tendons back there would have been fairly, fairly great. So, but Eli thought it was gonna be okay. Um, we just need to keep after him. So I, I was hoping to have him reset at six weeks and it's actually been eight weeks, which is normally a fine time to do it. His front feet, Brandon, if you could show his front feet, we've had so much wet weather, I partial, par, probably part of the reason why the feet are growing so fast, his front feet are really huge. They need to be taken down a lot. And I think he did a fine job the last time around eight weeks ago, but just, I've noticed this with my other horses, and I think it's because of the moisture that we have in the grounds. So they're walking in wet ground a lot and it's just allowing them, their feet to grow really fast, which is a good thing, but you need to really take care of it when it's doing that. His hind feet are not growing quite so fast. They're growing more at a normal pace, but I have noticed, I don't see a difference here or hardly any difference here, but I have noticed when I'm working him that he is still walking with his feet, trying to tip his feet like that. I believe the shoe is stopping the, the foot itself from wearing down more on one side than the other. So we'll find out when we take the shoe off. But I think that's uh, stopped that, but he's still walking a little bit, kind of on the corner of his, you know, tip with his feet tipped. It's more so when he's just on an empty load. When he's on a heavy load, he tends to put his whole foot down flat and pull, but, um, on a light load especially, you can really see it. Um, I was noticing the other day, it was really noticeable. Um, we were coming out with a, a wagon load last night 
with round bales and I could, I'll jump back to that and show you that, but it wasn't quite so noticeable then. Bearing feet. So if you look closely, it's probably not that noticeable. But they just tend to tip quite a bit. So we'll... Uh, like his toes turn in? Mm, not really, but it's hard to explain. So anyways, we have some ideas and I'm not going to bother, um, well maybe I will, I'll try to explain some of the ideas we had. So we had one idea of making his shoe and have the end of his shoe, the heel of his shoe, turn so that, in other words, the shoe would come out like this and kind of turn turn this way. And that would help support that hoof and not allow him to tip it. We decided not to do that though because that would um, give a big chance of getting caught on things with the, with the shoe, end of the shoe sticking out like that. Um, and I talked to my vet about it also and she thought that probably wouldn't be the best way to go. But even before I talked to her, both Eli and I had decided what what we're going to try to do is just put a little bit of a wedge between the shoe and the hoof here to bring this side of his hoof up uh, so the shoe, so we kind of stand in just a tiny little bit of an angle the opposite way. Now we're just going to do this to a small degree and I talked to my vet again and, and she said that sounded like a great idea to do. But we just got to do it a little bit because we may not even be needing to do that. Maybe just by having shoes on it's going to make all the difference. And we won't know this until we take the shoe off and inspect him over a little bit closer. And hopefully Lee, Eli, as he looks him over, he'll be able to make that decision as to what we should do, whether we should go with a wedge or just continue what we've been doing with the shoe and, and hopefully things will straighten back out. Um, he, he seems to be pulling fine, but um, I don't know, that's got to affect him some. So we'll wait till Eli gets here and get him in the stocks and see what, I'll, I'll even walk him around, even have Eli watch him as he walks around so he can get a better idea of what, what's going on. Okay, so Eli's here today and he's going to try to explain and try to figure out these problems that we're having with Baron. Okay, so go ahead, Eli, what were you saying? So what we're going to do today is try to move this shoe out a little bit more and put a wedge pad underneath here. We've got an overgrowth with the way he's walking this the shoe is being forced in so i'm going to try okay. to bring it out more and uh, and put a degree pad or in there to lift it up and see if we can help the process of that okay and that makes total sense um it's all trial and error is really what we're dealing with exactly right now. and i talked to peach error. about this too yeah <laughs> what she has to say she agreed 100 yeah. percent with what we're at first I told her about the, the hook thing that you're talking about and she yeah. said she liked the wedge pad a lot better. Yeah, and yeah. and just a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. don't, don't, so don't, don't go drastic. Yeah. 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 But another problem I'm having with him, <clears throat> and I don't know if it's just because of lack of exercise, although he gets seemingly enough plenty of exercise, but he was swelled up in his hind legs yesterday. And this morning it's down, it's not so right. bad, but right here, I mean this was swelled up considerably more, mm -hmm. you know, from here to here. Hmm. Both legs. Bo both legs were doing that. But I've noticed he's got, I, I, I didn't, it wasn't that big of a surprise because he's kind of been that way anyways, but I noticed the difference this morning that's less. And I worked mm -hmm. him pretty good yesterday and he was outside all last night. Okay. So. He don't seem sore No, anything. not a bit. Not a bit. Because usually I would, to make a rough guess, would be his kidneys. Because be all toxins will go to their feet. And if their kidneys are not working properly, their toxins build up, uh -huh. and that's why they get swelling uh -huh. in there. So that's something out. I really should talk to Peach about also then. It would be, yes. Yeah. And that's, I don't know, he's always had big legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you'd remembered when you put shoes on before if there was anything I odd at all. No, I didn't. And I didn't even think it was that odd until I was looking at the other horses. Oh, my goodness, that seems, seems yeah. and is. And it's down quite a bit this morning. I right, noticed a big right. difference. It must be just a 
Yeah. And it wasn't. That, that's something I would get him checked for is yeah. kidneys. Make yeah. sure those are working properly. properly. Yeah. And you can see right here, to me, it looks like that side's swollen up just a touch more than yeah. this side. It looks almost like he's hidden, or is that? He does have an. Does he, does he hit there? No, not necessarily. Okay. No, I'm not sure what that so was. That could be. Uh, you know, if it was just one leg, I would say that's the problem. But when both legs swollen up, I don't think that's. Are you sure we're not dealing with some mites? He so does have mites. He does have mites. Yeah, but that, I bet you that's where all your swelling's coming from. I, I hit him with that stuff that usually worked yeah. really good for my blacks, but it didn't work quite so well. Yeah, that is right. This leg, he's definitely gotten pretty good. This yeah. one, I have just to a little bit. Hit him again with. That could be your problem right there, Jen, the swelling. That could be, because I did treat him once for mites, because he was stamping, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll have to do it again. Yeah, that's that's what I would check. Okay, let's. I want to have you see him walking. Okay. Okay, well, why don't you make it go up in there and lead him right out here. Another exciting news is we have an Amish guy that's starting to work here too, so hopefully he'll be a big help to us. Although it makes videoing very hard because I've got to <laughs> be careful not to show their faces. Yeah. It's not hard videoing, it's hard editing. <laughs> you gotta go through and watch all this stuff and then yeah. cut all the and then when you're talking something important it's hard i've got to learn how to do it i've seen this happen that they'll actually take a blur put a blur over their face so you can't tell you can't see their face right, right. but i'm master doing that yeah. i was watching him last night we went and got some round bales and, and i didn't see him curling his like feet quite so mm -hmm. much but when we come right over here so it's very possible we're dealing with two problems i would say so yeah. He doesn't seem to stand the god just standing there, does he? As no, far as his not, feet? not really, but you can see where his outsides need to be brought up. Yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna walk Baron a little bit just so he like can watch and see if he's seeing anything as he's walking. Walk them right into the stocks. Unless you need to walk them out more. No. William, bring them right back here and put them right into the stocks. Get up there. Baron. Here. Okay, so we have them in the stocks. So you're really seeing with your other your other horses how much hose are growing this year? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Oh, yes. You're seeing it. Because yep. of the wet weather. Yep. Now even there, you did you, you you took off so much less on the outside, so does that mean it is still wearing or just not growing so good on that it's side? It's not growing so good. So you got this this part right here. Yeah. That's uh, Tells me it's not going. He's putting a lot of pressure on here, but maybe we're going the, the wrong way. But we'll try it. the shorter lead rope. Does the work. Hey, bear.
Come on, son. Pick it up. Pick it up, Baron. Pick it up. Pick it up. Come on. Come on. Pick it up. Have you noticed, it seems like those front feet have grown so much more than the hind feet. Has that been what you've been seeing or has that just happened to be on him? I would say just be on him because I see him going all, all around. Yeah. I like your pipes that you have in here to hold your stuff. That works. Yeah, like that fun. works really good. Yeah. Where did you see that idea? I just kind of grabbed that out of my own little. Oh, you thought about yourself. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I don't need need no fancy box. That's for sure. That thing's been doing good for me for 20 years now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> been caked and smashed and tipped over. I don't know countless times. Yeah. What I would like, of course, and we don't have to, but what I would like to do is we get this shoe on. Okay. We'll take him back out and walk him again. Okay. See if we can see a difference. Okay. And to see, to make sure we're going the right direction. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, Bear. One more time. Come on. On this one. Oh. Stop, stop. Hey, hey, Baron. Baron. Come on, son. Stop. I'm going to try that much, see? That works. So sometimes you'd put that whole plate or whole shoe underneath the shoe type of thing yes. for a tapered path. Yeah, if I uh, need to get the horse's angles up, I will put that whole pad underneath. And it kind of works as a bar too. Got the yeah, center. yeah. So they must come in all sizes? Yes, they do. Yep. Oh, Baron. Stop, stop, hey, hey, hey. So this is what he's going hey. to be putting on, just this little piece here. Hey, hey, hold back. Hey, hey, be nice, be nice.
every day longer now than a sex. Yes. So because of the wedge pad there, he's pulled the old nail out and tipped it a little bit more so it comes out the sidewall a little bit easier. Easy, easy, easy boy, easy boy. Interesting. We're gonna find out how she looks in a little bit. Come on, boy. Come on, pick it up. Pick it up, son. Oh, I need my. Come on. Easy. Okay. We could just walk around one more time. Hey, hey. Ready? Yes. Hey, you're free. Okay, so we got the one foot down. And we're just gonna let him walk around and have Eli get an idea of what's going on here. He's a fast walker. Mm-hmm. I like it if he keeps. You think there's an improvement? I think so. It definitely looks better. Put it that way. It forces him to keep that corner up. And that in turn will keep him from twisting it as much. Yeah. Put him right back in the stocks. Yep. Yeah. 
Mä moi. Jep, ska vi köra. Jag kan köra. Oh. What he's doing now is just cutting the clinches or bending them over so that they'll pull out when he pulls the shoe out. The clinches are just a term that is used and uh, when you pound the nails in the hoof, you bend over the end of the nails and those are called clinches. So now he's taking his hoof shoe pullers and just pulling the shoe right off. And now the trimming begins. He starts out with his hoof knife, cuts on the frog, cuts on the sole, takes some of the loose stuff off. guys that don't know, the frog is the triangle piece in the back of the hoof. And that's kind of like a, oh, a cushion for them as they're walking. So now he has his nippers. He's going around and taking some of the hoof growth and cutting it off. Just like your fingernails. Now they seem to be growing uh, levelly and normally, correct? Yes. And now this is just the rasp that he's using to level it out and smooth it out.
sent that away yes. for the clip. Oh, this one's got no clips, and I guess we're just gonna have to sit it back. But if you had a clip, if it, yeah, if you had a clip, I would. Which is yeah. right there. It's a lot easier and faster if you don't have to dub around with a wedge, right? Yep, that it is. Any kind of pat, for that matter. So this particular shoe has um, is able to put in eight nails, four on each side. So Eli, I've got a question. Um, how many, I know you prefer having horses come up to your place and you do them up there, and I usually take mine up there, but um, you do also go to farms quite often to do shoeing. How many, what's your clientele? How many horses do you do in a, in a week's time or, or? That's a good question there, Jim, because. You were talking earlier, you've got this one client, there's 30 horses 30 there. 30 horses, yes, we usually do 15 every two, three weeks. At that place? At that place. Yes. So my, uh, and I've slowed down quite a bit, but right now I'll probably do an average of 10 horses a week, 10 sometimes a week. 20. Yeah. But yeah. it just, it fluctuates a yeah. lot. Of course. It's not like you have anything else to do. You're only building sheds and uh, got a harness shop and uh, what else do you do now? You got other business businesses going besides. So yeah. it's not like you have anything else to do. Nothing to do right now. I've got more to do than I know what to do sometimes, but I've got a good family. A lot of manpower to help you with. Yeah. Manpower and woman power. Man and woman power, yes. Yeah. They help a lot. And these are the clinchers, so he's able to bend the nail over with those. Job. 
take him. Should be all free now. Go back and bear now. I want you to walk him around just a little bit, just to have a stick peek at him. Tell me what you think, Eli. Well, it's always nice to see a freshly shod horse. It is, it is. But as far as his hind feet, I'm still up and arms. I don't know. Let's see. So time will tell. We'll just time have to experiment. Yeah. Hopefully that'll solve our problem. Yeah. Okay, as you can see, I got Baron back in the stocks, and I've got one more thing I want to do with him today as far as stuff that needs to be done in the stocks. Um, because of his issues with mites, um, I'm going to try some more of the um, cattle dewormer that a vet told me to use years ago that works so well. I had so much trouble back when I had um, a buck and can especially. Um, buck really had it bad, and that cattle dewormer really worked good to take care of those mites and for a long, long period of time. Since that's happened, I've actually done this several times. I actually did put it on um, Baron's legs uh, quite a while ago now, and it seemed to help a little bit for a while, but they seem to be back again. And I don't quite know what, why that's happening, but uh, I am going to try something a little bit different this morning. I'm going to actually clip the hair off of his legs first, and then I'm going to put the dewormer, uh, the, the cattle dewormer around the hoof head, and I'll show you what I do. So now I'm just putting this right around their hoofs, hoof head.
kind of thought maybe it would bother him putting this on, but not a bit. Well, I would say that's rubbed in and should work good. Okay, so that job's done. The wedges are in on his hind shoes. Hopefully we'll have a new horse here after a little bit when this stuff really starts taking hold and improving things. A lot of things we, we are guessing on, we don't know a lot about, but we're experimenting. So anyways, hope you guys have a great rest of the day. We'll see you next time. And if you've got any ideas as to how we could have done things differently, let us know in the comments.